<laughs> Finally, someone wants to film an intro with me. I feel like it's been years, buddy. We're back, the headless YouTuber doing headless planty things with her trusty pug pudge. Back with another video. Uh, I know we're kind of early for a favorites video. It's I think this video is gonna go up mid-February, but I have a set schedule for the rest of the month and into March, so this is kind of the only time that it would work out. Like looking at my my plants that I'm showing you today, I don't think anything is really gonna change much until the end of the month. So I figure let's just get this out of the way. I'm gonna highlight, I think I have 10 plants to show you and Pudge just burped and it stinks. I wanted to film this video tomorrow because apparently it's gonna be sunny even though I can't really trust the weather these days. I always like doing favorites videos out here in the living room because uh, the sun comes through this window that's right next to me and you can get some nice shadows and you can see the textures of the leaves a lot better. But to be honest, I am emerging from a three day long depressive episode and uh, it was rough so now that I'm feeling a lot better today, I just figure I should just do it because who knows what tomorrow will hold. Tomorrow I might just be in bed again. So um, we're here, it's a gloomy day. Um, I'm feeling still a bit lethargic, but I think playing with plants will sort of perk me up a little bit. So with that said, let's get started. I need to go grab the plants. Oh, okay. My poor guy's itchy again. Hold on, babe, I gotta show him plants. Why don't you just sit right here? Good boy, stay there. Okay, ow, my nail just bent. Okay, so I'm not gonna be showing you these plants in any particular order. I just kind of grabbed what was closest. So I'm gonna start with a variegated plant. Okay. The first one that I have here, oh, I've missed doing these videos. I haven't done a favorites video since December and it's just so nice to, to see these plants in this light again, sorry, I'm just, I'm reignited. Um, so this is an Epipremnum aureum mandrula, AKA the mandrula pothos. You can see I do have it on the world's teeny tiniest little pole that I will be replacing soon in another repot with me video because I'm gonna get this one on the lazy moss pole. I am determined to size this up. I'm gonna throw a photo of Craig Milrin's mandrula pothos that he, he is just, I'm convinced that Craig Milrin is a time traveler and he has acquired knowledge and wisdom and skills throughout centuries and that's why he's just so good at growing plants. Mind you, he does live in Australia, so more tropical than obviously Canada, but like he's growing them in his house. He doesn't have a million humidifiers going uh, and he just, they just, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. So anyway, I am showing my, my mandrula this photo. Look at it, look at it. Those are my hopes for this little guy. And honestly, maybe this is just wishful thinking. Pudge. I can't focus with you trying to sniff in your bed, babe. So we started with this leaf. This is not the original leaf. I got this cutting from my friend Nessa. If you look at some of the bottom leaves here, I think this this isn't the original leaf, but it was one of the first leaves to come in my care. Um, the original leaf is now gone. You can see in comparison to my finger. And then you go up here, definitely sizing up a bit. I actually think this one might be getting too much light. You can see Oh, you can see like right here, this is what light bleaching looks like. And then right here. So I think I'm gonna be giving this one a little bit less light. I am switching things around in my EXO. So once I get paid again, I need to order new lights for the EXO because I do think the one I have in there is a bit too strong, even for a plant like the Mandrula. Pudge, babe, you're making all kinds of sounds in the background. He's like doing a full body lick down right now. He might bark, I just locked him in the bedroom with his, his dad. Back to this plant. So I do think I'm gonna give it less light, but I am liking the sizing up of these leaves so far. It has attached to this, I think, yes. It's gonna be hard to show you, but 
One of the lower nodes down here is attached to the pole and then, oh, come on. You, pr you can't see it, no, there's no way. There are two aerial roots that are now just starting to touch the pole. So it is working, but I'm not liking this little tiny thing. It's, it's obviously already outgrown it. So I need to give this one some TLC. It is a slower growing pothos, but I mean, I feel like each leaf is so rewarding. They're always so different than the one that came before it. I think one of the funnest things about this plant is that like you can have a leaf that is like this that is like mostly green and then the next one will surprise you and like throw just like a super super white leaf so i like the unpredictability of this plant and typically in the past i would have let a plant like this trail but because of craig's um plant and some other uh, plants that i've seen on instagram i am pretty determined to make this one climb so we'll see how it goes I did not expect to love this plant as much as I do. If you guys watched my propagation video, I, is it my propagation video? Yeah, I think it's my propagation video. I'll try and find the footage where um, this was a newer import. I got it from my friend Erin. It was not doing well. I chopped it, I rehabbed it. But since then, it has just rewarded me with these beautiful leaves. It did have this weird fungal thing for a bit. Like I would get these really bright yellow spots all over it and then it would just take over the whole plant. It would turn brown. The thing that helped a lot is I've done Phyton 35 foliar spray once a week for a month and it seems to have resolved. And along with foliar sprays, I have been cleaning this plant a lot because I find it to be a very EFN heavy plant, meaning there's a lot of extra floral nectaries that um, are produced on this plant, very similar to a philodendron micans. I am planning to do a whole video on how I care for philodendron micans just because that one has been requested a few times via Instagram. But I find that the care for them are the same because they have sort of the same tendencies with the EFN production, it's just in excess. So regular washes and then using a fungicide has been very helpful but like, just look at how beautiful this is. And I do need to repot this one soon. This one is literally just living in like Leca and moss and perlite. I do have this one living on my shelf right now. It was rehabbing in my Mars Hydro tent. It really, 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 really loved the warmth and the humidity in there but it just it's outgrown it obviously like something this big in a teeny tiny little tent just it doesn't work uh and i can see this caterpillar is starting to get bigger so i think leaf number three is on the way yeah so now i have it on my shelf it doesn't seem to have been too stressed about it usually by now uh this is week two that it's been on my shelf usually by now the stress that i can see is uh would have shown already and that usually starts by like having very very yellow tips that turn brown or like the edges turning yellow and brown but so far so good this one has just been a champ but i'm just like loving what is that sound it sounds like i need to always workers here live by the river we said it'll be fun we said so it reminds me very much of a philodendron sp columbia where there's like no actual color to the venation it's just really sunken in and it's so beautiful and i'm obsessed with this teeny tiny red booty hole right on the sinus i'm obsessed with these lobes like i just I'm so glad I did not sell this one because I was close. I, like when it was in its rehab state and it kept pushing leaf after leaf after leaf that looked sick and was spotty and gross, I was like, this plant is not for me. But honestly, this year is going to be the year of trying to really challenge myself um, rather than just buying plants, buying, buying, buying. I, I have a list of plants that I want to give a lot more TLC to, like a plant like this that I really put some care into. I just, 
I'm very proud of myself, I'm not gonna lie. And I do have some plants in my collection that have been starved um, for attention and I, I do wanna see them glow up this year. I will do a video on that showing some of my neglected plants and then the, like how I'm going to like rehab them and give them more attention. And then hopefully at the end of the year, I can do like an update video. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm glad I didn't give up on this one. I love it so, so much. Uh, the Mame used to be my favorite. I, I preferred it over this one, but now I'm feeling like this one is more my speed. I like the texture of this leaf blade a lot more than the Mame. The Mame has kind of a more glossy finish, whereas this one is like matte. It very much feels like the Philodendron SP Columbia or Philodendron SP Silver, and it's just, it's a beautiful, beautiful plant. So this is definitely one of my February favorites. I need to get my charger. Oh, I need to do my nails. I usually do my nails before a video, but I couldn't be bothered today. You pick your battles. Moving right along, here is a philodendron, philodendron, ew, philodendron. It's fine, okay. This is a philodendron, ho it, did I just say that again? Philodendron? Shh, okay, let's just restart. Okay, I'm really gonna think about it this time. This is my philodendron. Jose Buono that I got from my best friend Verly in California. She had a massive plant that her husband did not like. I forgot what he called it, but it was like growing 360 and he was just like, what, what is this? It was just like this all around. <laughs> so while I was there visiting, um, not the last time that I was there, but back in October. We chopped up her plant. She gave me a couple nodes. I gave one to Alice, and then I have a few. So the other stump is now waking up, but this one has woken up first. And can we just talk about this variegation? What? I didn't really see sort of the hype or the beauty around green on green variegation. Alice loves green on green variegation. One of her like, I think top wish list plants. I can't remember if she included it in her wish list video, but um, she's wanted a like a variegated monstera, the green on green variegation. So if anyone has any leads, but yeah, I'm seeing it now like this is arguably to me more beautiful than like white variegation and I see it now. So I'm really excited to see this one grow. I'm thankful that my best friend just so willingly gave me so many nodes to propagate. But yeah, I think, you know, once this guy sizes up a bit, I will get it on a pole. We'll try and get those little lobes to form. And this is gonna be a really, really fun plant to watch grow this year. So. I had to include it. I know it's a really tiny plant. You can't really see the features of the Jose Buono uh, in terms of the leaf shape, but you can at least see the variegation on it. And I don't know if this is going to turn more green because if I can remember correctly, when these two leaves came out, I believe that they were brighter like this, like the variegation was brighter and then it just sort of faded into this like um, muted green color. So. I would actually be pretty happy if this variegation ended up like this because this is like, it looks pretty yellow on camera, but it's it's more white in person. At one point, the Jose Buono was on my wish list, but it just surprisingly was pretty unattainable here locally. So I kind of just forgot about it and just stopped wishing for it. And then it just came to me. So yeah, I really, really love this guy and I'm hoping that I can keep it happy and just see it get a lot bigger. Next up is this Anthurium hybrid. I'm just calling it a Pappy hybrid. It was sold to me as an Anthurium Ace of Spades crossed with a Dark Mama. But the parentage of that is very, very, I'm skeptical of the parentage. If you saw this in earlier videos when I first acquired it, I would have shown that as the ID, but now I am just calling it a Pappy hybrid. My friends and I who have the, the same plant um, are calling it a Pappy hybrid just because we don't, we really don't know. And I don't want people thinking that this is like, you know, that's actually what it is. But yeah, this plant has been very, very hardy. It's been one of those anthuriums that 
since I imported it. It just has not stopped, hasn't given me any grief. I will say I'm not 100% sure what these markings are. It looks purely cosmetic, like something was happening to it while it was unfurling, but I can tell you that this one was totally unobstructed when it was emerging. It didn't have any trouble unfurling when it was in this state. I didn't see any markings on the leaf. I didn't touch it. I don't, I, I don't even think I took any photos of it. I just left it inside of my EXO. But, you know, you're kind of seeing a lot of this sort of cosmetic damage. So I'm not 100% I'm not sure what that is. I mean, maybe I did touch it and not realize it. But besides this one, obviously, this was the newest leaf to come out. So I am seeing some sizing up here. This would have been the last leaf to come before it. So in comparison to my gangly ass hands, um, yeah, we're seeing some we're seeing some sizing up. So I do think this one will probably be around the same size as this. But I'm telling you, like hybrids are just so much easier than plants and like their you know pure form or whatever. Uh, philodendrons and theriums, all hybrids. It's just that hybrid vigor. I swear it's a thing. This leaf here had a little bit of trouble coming out because I did move it from my EXO into my Redsta. I haven't shown my Redsta cabinet yet, but that video is coming. I, I'm not gonna tell you what I did, but anyway, this plant is in here, is in there now, and I think that going from um, the humidity in the EXO, which was about 80 to 85, down to the Redsta that's closer to like 70, um, I think it just, yeah, it struggled a bit coming out because you can see there's a little hole in there. There's some like surface abrasion, so it's probably gonna look something like this. This may be a bit ambitious, but I am considering moving all of my anthuriums out of greenhouses and grow them purely on my shelf. And that is because of my friend Amanda who grows amazing, amazing anthuriums just out in her living room. They're humongous, they're huge, and they're healthy, and they're beautiful, so I'm like, like, maybe, you know, maybe I can do it too. I, I don't think I'm as much of a plant whisperer as she is, but, you know, she definitely makes it seem like it's possible. So anyway, this thing is leaking out of the bottom. This Anthurium Pappy Hybrid definitely has to be one of my favorites this month, just because of like, look how bushy she's getting. She's so cute. There's nothing I, I dislike about this plant. It basically lived up to all of my expectations and more since when I imported it. And I do have this one growing in primarily soil. And there's a little bit of moss mixed in here. You can see it's very happy. There are drainage holes. I love these pots. I got these pots from Vandula. And then it's just topped with, with moss. Next one up is a philodendron. This is a philodendron billetier. I can't remember if I've ever showed this on a favorites video before. I feel like I probably have when it was a little bit smaller, but this one has just been so fun to grow. It's so easy. Honestly, the Billetier is probably one of the easiest plants that I've ever owned in terms of philodendrons. Uh, it does have, as you can see, a very wild growth pattern, but it's such a rewarding plant to grow and it really doesn't require much to size up. A lot of people grow billetiers to a massive size without a pole or without anything. I can see that mine is starting to push out these little aerial roots, so I probably will get it on a lazy pole, like a really small one. But yeah, this one has outgrown my shelf. This is the newest leaf to come out on it, which is significantly larger than uh, the ones that came before. I didn't know how big it was gonna be and it got burned on my grow light. So I've since then had to move it from that shelf into the corner because that's the only place it'll fit. But yeah, this one is really fun. It's just, like I said, it's very easy going, doesn't require much. I do have it in a no drainage, sorry, I have to put it at an angle so you can't see the glare, but it's in a no drainage pot with Leka at the bottom and my chunky soil mix. But now that this stem is getting pretty long, I'm either going to, yeah, either lazy pull it or just get it into a deeper pot, not necessarily a larger one, but like a taller one so that I can 
um, fill more soil in here. But I wanted to include this just because this thing has just been blasted by the heater all winter. Um, I have neglected it. At some point it was living at the very top of my, my shelf, so I just didn't really pay attention to it. I kind of just let it do its thing and it's rewarded me. I, I think since I've gotten it, only like one or two leaves have fallen off. Other than that, it's held strong. I do have a bigger billetier in my plant room, which is also sizing up. Um, it's probably going to outgrow the space it's in pretty quickly, but yeah, this is just one of my favorites. I love the leaf shape. I love the leaf texture. I love, love, love these orange petioles. They make me so happy. So had to include this guy because he has just been such a show off this winter. The next one is another big one for the frame too. I have shown this in a video before. I'm gonna scoot the uh, camera back a little bit. So this one is a philodendron glorious. It is a cross between a gloriosum and a melanochrysum. I got this one, I think it was for my birthday from Alice. And it was already quite big. The leaves were, yeah, about this big, maybe a, a tiny bit smaller, but um, it has then uh, sized up a bit. Actually, the leaves were about this big when I got it. So yeah, we've definitely seen some um, increase in size. I had this one in my largest EXO where I have my Mars Hydro light. And again, it was just a little bit too strong. So yeah, I need to get that light out of there because the Mars Hydro light wasn't designed for you to put it right above like such a small greenhouse. It's, it's meant to be hung in a larger um, grow tent. So not using it the way that you're supposed to be using it. So a lot of my plants burned. I was able to move it out while this leaf unfurled. So this one grew in my EXO under 24 watt lights and you can see it's not bleached out like this one. And honestly, the size is getting quite big. It's getting longer. Um, I'm starting to see the lobes develop a bit more. I'm really, really just anxious to get those like nice big lobes on it. And this one has also outgrown the pole it's on. I have to get it on a lazy pole because I, I hate this pole a lot. I have air layered it down here and I will show you in another video how I've done it, how I take it off and um, how I repot it. It is getting tall, but I don't plan on chopping it just because I like the size of it. I don't want to disrupt the roots. I don't want to disrupt anything. I want to just let it do its thing because if you watched my video that I recorded at Nick's house, his is just growing out in his living room, very low humidity, very low light, and his is a beast, it's a monster, and I want mine to look like that. And eventually, my goal is to grow this out in the living room as well. I don't want to have this in a tent or a greenhouse forever. My friend Amanda is also growing her glorious out in her living room, and so I know it can be done. And uh, that's another goal that I have this year. So, sorry, this plant's so awkward. But I just, I love this plant so much. Uh, I've said it before, this is one of my favorite philodendron hybrids. It is a vigorous grower. It is much easier than the Melanochrysum and the Gloriosum. I've read on like Instagram that people don't really understand what the hype is with this plant. And I will say like as a smaller, like more juvenile plant, I can kind of understand why you would think that. Just cause it looks pretty typical to any like velvety philodendron. But as it matures, you really start seeing some fun traits come through. And like if you compare this leaf down here, to say this one, it is beautiful. I definitely will be giving this plant some love soon and I'm excited to see, I'm excited to see the growth this year. Um, which order do I wanna show this to you in? Okay, let me show you this one first. So this here is a philodendron esmeral dense. I'm just so happy that I'm finally seeing some actual maturing on this plant. Honestly, I thought that it was going to stay a teeny tiny thing forever. This one has been my slowest growing philodendron, I would say of all of the philodendrons in my collection, but um, I'm really excited to see some of this ribbing happening. So I'm gonna scooch over and I'm gonna show you what uh, a mature one looks like. This is the Esmeral Dense Narrow Form. I got this one from my friend Ren in a trade, uh, when would it have been? Last year? 
it was either the end of 2020 or the beginning of 2021 where we did the trade and it was a single leaf and the leaf was about this big you can kind of see like the the very very slight ribbing on this more juvenile leaf but it becomes more prominent here and so uh, now is the time for me to really baby this thing I want to get it on a better pole than this just temporary burlap stick um, I am growing it in moss and I think I'm gonna keep it in moss I've had some really robust philodendron growth in purely moss so I think I'm gonna keep it um, I'm gonna keep it in there for now, but I do want to reapply myco on the roots. I don't know if I've ever applied myco on this plant before, so I want to be able to add that and then get it a new pull, but I had to include it in the favorites because when this new leaf came out, it didn't look as big as I thought it was gonna be, so it was much smaller as an emergent leaf, but it expanded a lot and showed me some more Esmeralda dense characteristics and so I'm really thrilled. I just, I was very tempted to order one from Equiflora because my friends and I are importing again, but I'm holding off because I think that it'll be more satisfying to baby this one and just watch it grow. This one is one of my favorite plants right now in my collection and I knew that I was gonna love it as much as I did when I brought it home. And this is a Ficus alii. I have been wanting this plant since I saw it on um, Tyler's page at, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tag him or I'll throw up a photo of his. And I spoke about this in my Back From California video and it I don't remember if it was this big all of this up here is brand new as is all of this so it has grown quite a bit there's some new growth happening down here and i had this out on my shelf uh, when i first got home from california and it was just it dropped so many leaves you can see sort of how bare it is down here and it did not like it so i popped it into my mars hydro tent I gave it a lot of warmth, a lot of humidity, and it just loved it. And then um, about two weeks ago, I moved it out to my shelf and it has not fussed at all, which I am so happy about because I didn't want to lose this plant. I love how long these leaves are. It kind of reminds me of a Anthurium arismuoids or something like that. I don't like these as so much as a tree a lot of the nurseries will shape them to have like the braided trunk and then it'll just kind of be this big bushy thing up top in my back from california video i did show a photo of erin's plant that she got from someone locally where they've allowed it to grow kind of wild and i love i love that one so if i ever did have a tree form i would want it to look like erin's but i actually prefer it in a smaller plant just because i feel like you can sort of enjoy these leaves better than if it was like a big bushy tree and the new leaves are just so fun they kind of come out really curled and weird. I wish I took some photos of some of the leaves unfurling, but they like literally look like a little rolled up silkworm. Oh, you can kind of see here. And you think like, how is this thing gonna straighten out? But it eventually does. And yeah, like this, this leaf is brand new and this one was all twisted like the other one, but they flatten out, but they're just so strange. If you have been looking for a fun ficus, search no longer <laughs> because the ficus alii is really fun. I highly recommend getting this plant. I will say uh, to just expect a little bit of stress when you first take it home. I would not recommend repotting it right away. I would kind of just let it chill out and let it acclimate to your place. Don't freak out if you see leaf dropping. And if you do and it's happening at a very rapid pace, try and give it more warmth and more humidity and yeah i think that it'll make a, a good recovery but now it's just living on my shelf it's pushed out this leaf on my shelf and i think that it's like fully acclimated now and it only took about two weeks so very 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 
very happy with this plant and my sister actually got one too she sort of not like fell out of the hobby but she had to sort of take a little break from from the plant stuff for a bit because you know she was getting her masters and then she had a kid and she's pregnant again so we should put that on the back burner but she did grab one of these and she always sends me updates and shows me new leaves and like this one is just bringing her a lot of joy she has it right next to her on um uh, where she works during the day and she's always saying just like how much she loves this plant and I agree with her like this one is just one of those that it's just so fun. Yeah, Ficus olii, definitely one of my favorites this month. Of course, I had to include my Anthurium Ace of Spades. I don't plan on doing favorites videos every month but just expect that whenever I do do a favorites, this will probably be in it. So this was the original leaf that I got. I don't know what is happening down here. I think I might have let a foliar spray that I did sort of sit on the leaf. This was a leaf that emerged in my care, the first leaf that emerged in my care. And then this one is the newest one. So we're getting some size on here. I think that the camera is picking up that sheen. I swear this thing is like a mermaid. It's very sort of iridescent. You can see it changing colors. It's got like these turquoise undertones, but in the right light, it's like you can see these bright greens and almost yellows. It is magic. And then at nighttime under like low light, it's like it just puts off this like shimmery silver she, I, I can't explain it. I'm not good at explaining things, but this has just been an absolute joy to have in my collection. I'm still in disbelief that I own one, to be honest. I'm obsessed with everything about it. This teeny tiny pink sinus, the lobes, the abaxials, the sort of blade texture. It's just an incredible, incredible plant. If Amanda hadn't gifted this to me, the chances of me owning one was probably very slim just because they are quite pricey. So I am eternally grateful to Amanda for being just so generous and kind and being such a great friend. But I had to keep her plant tag. Obviously I know what this is, but the tags are so cute. She even puts a little heart. Anyway, I am excited to see how this one grows. We've been sort of chatting about this like weird fungal thing that happened with the dark form AOS, which is what I have. Uh, I feel like I'm starting to see a little bit of it, but I am going to take her advice and try some Phyton 35 uh, drenches, foil, foiler, <laughs> foliar sprays. As sort of sad as I am to think that this plant might be taken by a fungal disease or just overtaken by a fungal disease as it gets older, I am kind of seeing it as a challenge and an opportunity to, to like study it and understand it more. If you don't know what I'm talking about, apparently these dark form Ace of Spades kind of get this weird fungal thing as it matures and it's primarily or predominantly the dark form of it and it's been sort of documented in other people's plants as well but you know we're gonna have hope I'm going to try my best with this this little guy and I'm excited to just show you the growth of it the last one is a gift from my dear friend Jing who just spoils me all the time it is a variegated philodendron <laughs> why can't I say that word philodendron I almost said philodendron this is a variegated philodendron heteracium bar oxycardium, aka variegated Hartley philodendron. And I did have one of these from another friend. She was kind enough to send me one, but unfortunately it reverted. I'm not giving up on it. Um, I did get some advice from a few people when I posted about it in another YouTube video about it reverting. They just said, freaking pump it with as much light as you can. And honestly, I did. And then the first leaf that came out after two green leaves, sorry, it's all, it's all clavage. Uh, the first leaf that came out after a few green leaves did have the teeny tiniest bit of variegation out in the corner. So we are not fully giving up hope yet, but I am happy to sort of have another one in the meantime that has just incredible variegation. The plan I think for this is I'm going to get this to root 
first before chopping it. And then I think I'm gonna chop it at every node because I do wanna have a, a bushier plant rather than um, like just one trailing one. So I'm just gonna take it slowly. I'm not gonna jump into it right away. Uh, I do want to at least get some roots on one node before I do the chop because I don't wanna lose all of them. It's so, so beautiful. It's sort of got like sectoral variation, but also that like same variegation that you would see like in a Marble Queen Pothos. And it's just really fun. So I'm super happy to have this one. I guess once it roots, I will give you an update or maybe I'll propagate this one on camera. I am terrified, but for now I'm just gonna enjoy it as it is. And yeah, thank you Jing for this. I am super, super happy to have it. Well, this one was, I think, a shorter one. I usually try and showcase like 15 plants during the favorites, but I'm trying to not show repeat plants from previous months, so I'm just gonna stick to 10 plants um, for the favorites. But just kind of wanted to show you sort of what I'm loving right now. You will be seeing these plants again probably somewhat soon after this video goes up because I am going to be doing another, not a plant room refresh, but just I'm moving the plants around inside of each greenhouse. So uh, yeah, you'll probably be seeing them again. But for now, I think that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching another video. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed from the beginning or if you're new here, thank you so much. If you liked this video, my stomach just grumbles, please give it a thumbs up because it helps our visibility on YouTube a lot. But yeah, I appreciate you all. Thank you again for being here and I will see you in the next one.